Bear the Arena, Solo, Paladin. Words you never thought would be in a sentence in phase three of Season of Discovery. But it's possible, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So before we get started, there's just one requirement you'll need, and that is the Shadow Forge key. If you don't know how to get it, just Google it or look it up on YouTube for a guide. It's just a quest where you've got to go into Black Rock Depths itself with a group and kill a few bosses, and then you'll have the key. I would also recommend bringing some mana pots. You don't need the biggest ones, superior mana potions will do and also bring some restorative potions and we'll go into why on that a little bit later. These are the talents we're going to be using for the run. We've got 20 points in the holy tree, taking the most important self-healing talents just like we have done in other solo farms such as spiritual focus, healing light and illumination. Moving on to the protection tree, we have 21 points taking the most defensive route we can with readout, shield specialization, anticipation and toughness. We're also going to be taking precision because of the gear we're using, we don't really have a lot of hit. And the bosses in the arena are level 53 to 54. And finally finishing up the talents with Blessing of Sanctuary for more reduced damage. And this is the runes we're going to be using. Some of them are similar to the previous farms that we've done with a few changes. One being on the chest for Aegis. This entire farm isn't about how much damage you can do. It's about how much damage you can take and live through the damage that you do take and slowly whittle down any mobs or bosses that we're doing in BRD Arena for. The other change that we have is actually on the legs. Instead of using Exorcist, we're using Avengers Shield. Now, the reason we're using Avengers Shield is because on the first phase of the event, there is a lot of ads that spawn and this is AoE damage. You can swap it out to Exorcist for the boss if you like. You don't get a lot of time though between the ad phase and the bosses spawning unless if you want to reset the boss. You can just keep on Avengers Shield or you can go with Exorcist. Either or, it really don't matter at that point. Other than that, we have our stock and standard Fanaticism on head, Hammer to Righteous on wrist, Hands for Crusader Strike, Waist, Sheaf of Light and Feet Sacred Shield. I'll just quickly show you the gear that I've been using for the farm. I've tried to go as much stamina as I could with a little bit of damage mixed into there, but just be careful if you do want to go for more damage because you're all about reducing damage when you're doing this farm. Um, you don't have to be quite as good geared as me, but honestly, you need a decent amount of gear to pull this off. It is a really hard farm. The Dark Moon cards, for example, especially Sandstorm, come in clutch, especially for the adds at the start. So having good gear definitely helps. Try to have at least a PvP set be in full plate with a shield, and you should be able to pull it off. One quick note, I have enchanted my weapon with Icy Chill. It's not the greatest enchant, it doesn't proc a ton, but when it does proc, for 5 seconds, the boss that you're attacking or the mob that you're attacking will have attack speed reduced by 25%. It is fairly expensive to get it enchanted, it's probably around 80 gold at least on my server on Living Flame EU, but honestly you don't need this enchant, you could just go with any enchant that you have. Now going into the route to get to the arena safe spot, you're going to come to the left, use your Shadow Forge key to open the gate. Behind here there'll be a patrol, just try and dodge him to get to the other gate on the right hand side. Once you're past this gate, go to the door on the left and open this door. Now once you open this door, you'll come across a few patrols and you will encounter some mobs on the way. Don't worry if you pull everything, just keep running to the reset point that is right here. You can also activate the arena while you're doing this before you get to the reset point. I'd only recommend doing this after you've done it a couple of times though, just so you know the feel of it. But once the mobs reset, then you're good to go. Now this part is very, very important. When you do pull the arena and he starts the event, you want to come back to the reset point and wait on this reset point until the mobs spawn. Two things will happen. Either the mobs will spawn or the mobs won't spawn. If they don't spawn, just dip down a little bit until they do spawn and then get back on the reset spot. Why this is so important is because I found out this is the best way to stagger the mobs. If you go into the mobs or you stay too close to the gate or where the mobs are spawning from, they will spawn the second pack very quickly. And that is a death sentence. You will not be able to handle two packs at once. It is just too much damage. So when you do pull the first pack, you're going to want to bring them back to the door, furthest away from where they spawn, and you want to kill them in the corner. Sometimes when you're on the first pack, the second pack will just automatically spawn. It's kind of on a soft timer. I have had it before where I've killed the pack quick enough where they haven't spawned. If that's the case, that's great. You get a bit of a rest and then you can just go into the middle of the arena and pull them. If it does take you too long and the second pack does spawn, sometimes they aggro. It depends on the level range. Sometimes they're level 50, sometimes they're level 52. If they are level 52, chances are they will aggro. And if they do, just try and reset and kill whatever is left on the remaining pack and then go to the second pack. Now, for these adds in the first phase of the event, you can fight up to six different types of mobs. The bats, which do an AoE silence. The scorpions, which do two different types of stacking poison slows. 
the spiders which do a stacking dot and a poison that increases physical damage taken, the snakes which will do a ranged spit with a stacking dot, the beetles which will give you a disease reducing attributes by 25 and an armor shred, and finally the kodos which do a thunderclap and increase your damage taken by certain spell types. Each of these packs vary in difficulty, the most difficult is probably the spiders and I highly recommend using restorative potions to help you with these packs. And remember to take your time, use your full toolkit such as bubble and bop. You'll want to judge wisdom on any of the mobs you're attacking and use seal of light. Don't worry about using damaging seals, it's all about staying alive here as the first phase of the event sometimes is typically harder than the actual bosses. Once the first phase of the event is over you want to heal up and get mana as quick as possible so you can get ready for the boss. Once the boss spawns, if it's not the boss you want, you can run to the logout skip position right here and log out, which will send you back to the start of the dungeon, ready for a reset. Do note that this jump will probably require a fair amount of practice though, so just bear that in mind. But we've got the boss we want, and I'll show you the Eviscerator kill, as this is the boss I would imagine all you paladins want to be able to get your joint best in slot belt. When you pull the boss, you want to judge wisdom and use Seal of the Crusader as the active seal. Sounds a bit weird, I know, but here's the logic. And here's how it played out in the attempts when I was still learning how to do this farm. So you'll attack a ton faster, which will generate more procs from Seal of Wisdom to return more mana back, as you'll be blasting yourself with so many heals as he deals a ton of damage. He has about a 1.0 attack speed, and he absolutely chomps through your health bar so fast. While simultaneously dealing more damage with your white swings through raw weapon DPS, because half of the time he is immune to magic damage. So because of this on all the attempts where I tried different things, Seal of the Crusader actually turned out to be the best active seal to use. Now this boss has three abilities, a Shadow Bolt Volley, Anti-Magic Shield and Vicious Rend. For Shadow Bolt Volley we'll tank the boss in this position at one of the gates and LOS every time he casts the Volley to reduce the amount of damage we're taking. And because of this I recommend running Devotion Aura instead of Shadow Protection Aura. Secondly he has an Anti-Magic Shield where he'll be immune to all magic damage for 10 seconds. During this time, just auto attack and heal. You can use Crusader Strike, it won't do any damage, but you will still restore mana. Lastly is Vicious Rend, and this one can be pretty dangerous, as it stacks up to 3 times, and when it has 3 stacks, it deals a lot of damage. So this, combined with the amount of raw melee damage the boss already does, can be very dangerous. If you reach 3 stacks, I would recommend either using Bubble or Bob to clear the stacks, unless you are extremely healthy on mana, and can manage to heal through it. Overall the kill time is pretty long, it takes about 7-9 to nine minutes to slowly whittle him down. Just remember above all, play it safe, don't greed for damage, remember to LOS the Shadow Bolt Volley, have mana potions on hand because it is a very long fight and very healing intensive, and eventually he will die. I'll just quickly show and explain some of the other fights in case if you do want to kill some of the other bosses. And again, just like in phase 1 with the adds, they vary in difficulty. So with Okthor, the big ogre guy, there's no need to LOS him because if you LOS him you will generate range from him and when he has range he will just spam cast anyway. So just take the hits on the chin. His damage is very burst there but it is manageable. For a noob you want to LOS the Shadow Bolts. Keep yourself topped up because Curse of Tongs can reduce your cast time for your heals. Instantly freedom yourself when you are rooted with the net. Hedrum the Creeper. Dispel any poisons and trying to out heal the damage. He does deal quite a lot of damage. If you're struggling, consider using restorative potions as paralyzing poison stuns. This boss is hard, but he is possible. And lastly is Grizzle. He's the only boss I actually couldn't defeat. I actually thought he would be the easiest, but it turns out when he rages, the damage output that he does is just purely too much to heal through, and the enrage lasts for over two minutes. So he is basically a no-go unless if you're coming with an extra person. And just as a quick note, the boss that drops a Savage Gladiator Chain, Gorosh, does not spawn in Phase 3. That will be for Phase 4. This guide will still be applicable for Phase 4, although it will be much, much easier at that point. But just bear in mind, he doesn't spawn currently. So once you've killed your boss, the belt didn't drop, you've cried your sorrows away, you want to come to the reset point at the top, which I shown you earlier, and you want to log out here, and it will teleport you back to the entrance of the dungeon so you can reset and go again. And just bear in mind that this farm is probably going to require a lot of gear, a lot of practice, and the use of some consumables. But hey, it's doable, and I've shown you how to do it. So now get out there and go and do it. Let us know how you get on. Let us know in the comments. And if you want to see me try and solo any other content, just let me know, and I'll give it a shot.